So to start this tutorial, you first need to open up After Effects, which I've already got open, and then go to New Composition, open up New Composition, and make sure that the preset is 10, 8, uh, HDTV 1080-25, it's a square pixels. I would change the resolution to a third for now, or a half, just to make it easier to work, and then just name your composition, whatever you want to name it. Once you've done that, you'll have a blank um, composition, the colour background, you need to import your footage. You can double click in this area, find the footage you want to import, then click open and that will import, although I do already have this footage in there already. Once you've done that, drag your composition, uh, drag your footage into your composition, try and match up the middle dot into the middle, and because you've shot that in 4K, it will be too big. So the first thing you need to do is resize it. So if you come down to this area here, open this, go to transform and you can rescale it. Now I know it's 50% but if you want you can click and drag or click in the area and just type in 50%. Once you've got this in it won't be the right part of the footage that you want so you need to just click on the footage and drag it to the left and you need to find the point of the footage that you want. So I know I'm messing around here And that's how I want the video to finish. So I want to start from about this point. So if I play that through, yeah, that's the kind of point I want. Okay, so if you fast forward to the point where you need to freeze it, because if you look at the original videos, you get the freeze and then the double jump in. You need to find the point where you want to freeze the frame, move your playhead to that, and then on your keyboard, press Command, Shift and D, and that will duplicate your layer. You then need to right-click on the new layer that you've just got, go into Time, and go to Freeze Frame. And then duplicate this layer again. And that is just Command and D, and it will do a duplicate layer of what you had before. Move this one slightly out of the way, because what you want is it to jump once and then jump again, if you watch the original video. So for the first jump, zoom in on the timeline, and that's just using this area down here. Then you want to come to your options in here. If it doesn't give you the option straight away, minimize it and reopen it. Go to transform. And you need to set the position and uh, scale. So from this bit we want to zoom in a little bit. So I've gone to 58, you might be slightly different, and then just reframe it slightly. So now you should have a jump, and then go to your next clip, and again go to your transform, change your scale, so zoom in, and then reframe your shot. So we're going to end like that. So if I zoom the timeline out a bit, you now go from doink and then doink again. So it's two jumps in. At this point you're only working on this top layer here. So these two are now done. You need to duplicate this layer again. So Command and D. I would then suggest you hide the layers below. So if you click on the little eye icons on the left hand side, it comes up to this area up here, and if you go to the Roto Brush tool, click and hold, and then click on Roto Brush, and you need to double click this top layer. You're now in the Roto Brush area, and what you do is draw around yourself. So you just draw around this. This will not be perfect straight away, you will have issues with this. So, as you can see, this is collected in the guitar, and the radiator, and the chair. To delete that, hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and select the bits you don't want to rotor brush. It will give you a red line and you can slowly redraw around yourself. If you go too far, you can then just go back to the green and redraw on yourself. So I want that and delete those bits and that bit. And if you want to see how good this has actually worked, you come up to here, you've got the layer that we're editing. If you go back to the main layer, you can see that I've got something here coming out of my neck. 
and then a bit of the guitar down here. So if you go back to here, you know that this area isn't quite right. And apparently this area wasn't quite right too. Okay, not perfect, but that'll do. Once you've done this, go back to your main composition and you can then to turn your other layers back on if you want to. What you need to do is go to Layer, New, Solid and choose a colour following the Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So you can go red or blue, so I'm going to go bright red for this one. And click OK. And then click OK again. And that will put that on the top layer for you. You need to cut this to the size of the these layers here. So come to this side, wait till you get a double arrow. If you hold the shift key, it will lock onto different things. So it will lock onto this point. If you don't hold the shift key, you can move it anywhere. So hold the shift key and lock it in. You then need the red layer to be below this top layer. Give it a second to work. And the reason you're doing this is you're gonna make this layer opaque so it can be seen through. So if you come to your option, <coughs> So if you come to your transform options here, you can turn the opacity down. And so you turn it down just to something that you feel is quite, that's right. So I'm going to turn it down to 70. So now if you refire it, you go do it, and then into that one, and then the red comes in. At this stage, I would make sure all your layers are minimized, and I would lock all your layers just to make sure everything doesn't move when you start adding in the text. Come up to the text tool at the top here, click, drag out a fairly decent text box, and then enter your first name. If it doesn't come up as white, you can select your text, come over to this area, double click on there, go to white, and add that in. You can also change your text font here, and change the size. I would suggest a fairly large text size, but we can, you can resize that later and choose a font that's similar to the Brooklyn Nine-Nine or something that you like. To make sure that all of those are exactly the same, you just repeat it again. So I'm just going to duplicate the layer by pushing Command and D, come up to the pointer tool, move that one down, and then I'll double click in this layer so I can highlight it, which should automatically change the text. If it doesn't, you'll have to come to here. I'll delete that and then I'll put my surname. And then once you're happy, click back on the pointer tool. Next, come up to the drawer of the shape tool. So click at the right hand tool. Make sure you don't have any of these selected. So click away so none of these are selected. Click on the shape tool and draw your shape. And the shape is going to be the background to the text. You need to change this colour to the same colour as your background. So the way that you can do that is by unlocking your red solid layer. If you double click it and you come and hover over it, in the top right hand corner in this area here, you will see the colour code for it. And for mine, for red, it's 255 for R, G and B are both zero. So I can get rid of that layer, come back to the shape layer, make sure your pointer tool is selected, click on the fill. And then in here, you can put 0, 0, and that needs to be 225. And now I know that this is exactly the same size as, the same colour as the background layer. Once you've done that, you need to make the shape and the text the same length. So if you hold shift, you can select them all, come to the left hand side, move them across, again hold shift, and it will lock into that area. Now, as you can see, none of these layers are correct at the moment. So if you haven't done so already, move your shape layer to the bottom of there, so your text is above it. Then if you come into the arrow here and go to transform, and you just want to rotate it slightly, just to give it a bit more of an edge. If you rotate it too much, you'll come off the edges in this area, so just be careful how far you rotate it. If you haven't made your uh, text box large enough, double click on the edge, and you can just lengthen it. And then once you're happy, click off it. So I've given that 10%, minus 10% angle. You need to do that for the text as well. So if you come up to both of these, go to transform, 
and you need to make them both minus 10. Once you've done that, you need to change and move your text so it fits within the box. If you start with your surname, that needs to be roughly in the middle of the text area, and then your first name just sits on top of the line. And try and get them so they're fairly central in the middle of each other. You can use the little dots as the center point. So mine should be around about there. Yeah. Once that is the fact, that's how the final look would be. So you'll click in. That's how you find it. But you, what you want to do is get the text to come in from different directions. So first, you need to link your surname to your layer shape. So you can do that by going to Parent and Link, click on that, and then click on your shape layer, or you can click this uh, Whip tool and then come over to that. So anything that you do with the shape layer will move your surname at the same time. You now need to set your position keyframes. So I would always say you just need to start at the end. So find the point where you want the this to be at the still. Click on your position keyframe, go backwards, and then click on the keyframe add and remove keyframe button here. So you'll have two keyframes in this area. Now you can either click on the shape layer, which should already be selected, and you can move it out of the way, or you can change the values down here if you want. And what's that going to do? Is it's going to fly in from the left hand side. For your first name, if you want this to fly in, uh, come straight over sort of over your head, you need to turn it into a 3D layer. So now it is a 3D layer, and you need to match your keyframes with these. And you can match the keyframes by going left and right on this keyframe button here. So once we know that that keyframe is in position, we can add a keyframe there, go backwards, add a keyframe there. So this will be the end point. At the beginning point, I want it to fly in overhead. And what you do with that is you can you just move this. If you want it to move quickly, hold the sh hold shift on the keyboard, and it will fly through. So now, if we come to this point and play it through, it will do that. To add something, just to make it look a bit more realistic, you just need to add a bit of motion blur. So if you come into your effects area here and just type in motion, and you can go to CC Force Motion Blur, add that to your shape layer, your surname and your first name. And now as the text flies in, it has a small amount of motion blur, which just adds a bit more realism to the piece. A problem that you'll probably face is after a few frames, I think it's 20 frames, the rotor brush will stop working and it's some sort of quirk with After Effects. I'm not sure why it does this. To get around this, if you go to New Composition, name it whatever you want, Final, in your project, drag in your test, whichever you've named your first video, drag that in. Find the point where this ends, and you can duplicate the layer, so Command, Shift, and D again. And then on this top layer, go to Time, Freeze Frame, and that will keep it frozen for the 10 seconds or the length of the composition. And now you'll have a final piece that does something like this.